You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. We are kicking off your 11 minutes of nonstop news in Gwinnett County, where a shootout at an apartment complex has left one person dead. This morning, police are still looking for that shooter. 11 Alive's Ariana Manis has new details from overnight. Ariana? Gwinnett County police tell us they're still trying to piece together the moments leading up to one person being shot, and they're asking people who live in the area to help them arrest a suspect. Now, police tell us that one person was shot in the 1600 block of Prickle Road, just at an apartment complex in Norcross. Police say they were called to the area just around 8 p.m. Sunday night after a number of gunshots were heard. They tell us that multiple people actually called 911, and once they arrived, they found the victim's body. In between two apartment buildings, investigators believe this all started with two people shooting at each other, but they still haven't determined an official motive. They have yet to release the victim's name, and they're asking anyone in that area who can help with their investigation to give them a call or call Crime Stoppers. Back to you. Ariana, thank you. This morning, we are staying on top of efforts to bring these little girls home safely. The GBI says a woman took 11-year-old Kylie Horn and 4-year-old Kylan Harper from a Burger King in Muskogee County on Sunday. Police say this woman, 49-year-old Michaela Harrell, abducted them. We don't know yet her relation to the girls, but police are saying this morning they believe the little girls are in great danger. She was last seen driving a 2011 blue or gray Honda CRV with a Georgia tag TGS7835. Officers say that car was headed toward Osceola, but now they believe they've switched cars and could be in a gold 2000 four door Lexus tag SBZ8631. Take another look at your screen. This is a picture of the little girls and the woman police believe have them. If you know where they are, call police immediately. Polls open a little later this morning for the start of early voting. We've told you about this November's election that will feature local races in your area. The polls open at different times, some places as early as 8, others at 9 this morning. The early voting period lasts until November 3rd. During that time, there are two weekends that you'll be able to cast your ballot. Cities and counties have different locations where you can early vote. You can decide on that location. On Election Day, though, you have to go to the assigned precinct. Election Day, as a reminder, is coming up on November 7th. Coming up quickly, Chesley. All right, thanks a lot, Gerald. We are starting off with fair skies on the outside. Those skies will uh, eventually have more clouds begin to move in from the north. We're looking at temperatures right now in the 40s, even some 30s up here to the north. Cool spot would be Blairsville at 39 degrees, 46 Marietta, 45 degrees in Duluth. You've got 47 degrees in the city of Atlanta, down toward Peachtree City as well. Also cool over toward Carrollton. You're at 42 degrees starting off this morning. You're looking at uh, uh, a few more clouds pushing in. Once we get past noon, more of those clouds will start to move right in, back into our forecast area. There could be a stray sprinkle or two coming out of those clouds. Uh, not likely to see that, at least here in the metro area, of course, because it's only a 10% chance or less. I think mostly you'll just have those clouds out there trying to ring out a shower or two. Uh, and look at these breaks in the clouds. That will give us an indication of how high those temperatures will go today. You're only looking at temperatures right around 57 degrees or 56 degrees by noon on our way to 59 degrees for an afternoon high today with those clouds taking over the area. Also take a look at the winds. You're looking at winds up to about 15 miles per hour for this afternoon. Gusts will be higher than that. Gusts will be mainly in the 20 mile per hour range. So that's just going to add to the coolness of the air, if you will. Uh, in fact, that cool air stays in place for us starting today. We had it tomorrow, yesterday. We'll have it again tomorrow as well. I think high temperatures will be in the 60s, but that cool air will start to retreat back to the north as milder air begins to work in by the time we get toward uh, Thursday and to uh, well, Thursday into Friday as well. We're watching also on Friday a front making its way down toward the area. That front will move through and bring back some cooler air our way as we head into the weekend. It will also give us a chance for a stray sprinkle or two. So it won't be until the end of the week that we get a chance for some rain. Looking at a 50% chance for now for some showers to come in with that front. Here it is, our forecast track model. You can follow along with me at the time right there at the top of the screen. Shows those clouds pushing in. Again, you notice these little green blotches here. An isolated sprinkle or two, that'll be it. For the most part, we're going to hold on to the clouds at least through about 8, 9 o'clock tonight before they begin to dissipate. And we'll get the sunshine back in here by tomorrow, which will help to boost those temperatures up a bit. So we'll be in the 60s for highs by the time we get to Tuesday. By Wednesday, which is my pick for the week, mostly sunny skies, the temperatures will be back into the 70s. Keep in mind, we should be in the middle 70s this time of year. I think we'll only be in the low 70s for the rest of the week. We are staying on top of Israel's war against Hamas. This morning, there are efforts to get Palestinians evacuated at the Egypt-Gaza border. 
border. However, Israel is denying a ceasefire that would allow that to happen. Gaza is faced with a humanitarian crisis as hundreds of thousands evacuate to the southern part of Gaza. Clean water, food and medical supplies running short. In Israel, the death toll has gone up to more, more than a week after Hamas's surprise attack. This morning, more than 1,400 in Israel are dead and that number is nearing 3,000 in Gaza. The Israeli military is getting ready for the potential of a ground assault. President Joe Biden says Israel will be making a big mistake if the country tries to occupy Gaza. Here back home, we are coming up on two weeks without a House Speaker. Julie Serkin will be following this for us this morning on the Today Show, and here's a preview. Jim Jordan, the conservative Republican who was chosen behind closed doors by his colleagues to be their speaker designee, is about 50 plus votes short to get the gavel on the floor. This all comes as the House has been virtually paralyzed for two weeks without a House speaker. They can't do so much as pass a resolution expressing support for Israel. And of course, this is all happening with two simultaneous wars overseas and a government funding deadline just around the corner. Stick with us for full team coverage coming up on the Today Show. And I'm Liza Lucas turning now back to Atlanta where local actors part of SAG-AFTRA union will rally again today as they continue their months long push for a better contract. The union, which represents thousands of actors, has just crossed the three month line since the strike started. Actors are now demanding and have continued to demand more pay to keep up with inflation and compensation for streaming platforms. Protections against artificial intelligence also remain a sticking point. Now today's rally also comes after both sides confirmed last week that current negotiations between the union and Hollywood studios are suspended. Tonight's rally will be held at the Teamsters local 728 Union Hall on Lakewood Avenue. It starts at 630. This morning we're learning more about three new buildings coming to Clark Atlanta University. It's proposing a new freshman residence hall, a second dining hall and a student success center. That residence hall will be the first of its kind to be built and owned by Clark Atlanta University since the 1996 construction of Brawley Hall for the Olympic Games. It's expected to house 400 students. Clayton County Restaurant Week is kicking off this morning. Here are some details and some deals you should know about. First, a look at a few restaurants offering 10% off your bill. If you decide to order online, make sure you use the promo codes you see right there on your screen. And here is a look at some places offering 15% off, some restaurants even going up to 20%. The county is really hoping to grow its reputation as an international foodie destination. So this week, the perfect time to try out some different dishes and the flavors in your area if you haven't already. Tens of thousands of people came together for this year's annual Atlanta Pride Parade. 11 Alive's Thunder Truck was part of the action on Sunday, along with a big group of 11 Alivers walking the route. A huge parade, 5,000 marchers, over 100 floats. You can see a great slideshow about it on 11alive.com right now, along with our 20-minute Pride special. Just head to our Voices for Equality tab on the website. Good morning, Chesley. Good morning, Cheryl. We are looking at 59 degrees for a high today, but we'll gradually warm it up as we head through the week. 65 on Tuesday. Wednesday 70 is going to be my pick for the week under mostly sunny skies. A few more clouds coming back to us by Thursday. Friday, here comes some rain, a 50% chance for now. Still in the 70s, and then we'll cool down behind that front that moves through just in time for the weekend. 68 on Saturday, Sunday 71 with another 10 on the Wazami. Normally, you know, speeding tickets, couple of hundred dollars here or there, right? How about this baby of a whopper? One man looked at his ticket and whole lot of extra numbers in there, decimals, commas, you name it. It was more than a million dollar fine. He was stopped doing 90 in the 55. He knew he was going to get a super speeder ticket, but didn't think it was going to be a million dollars. A representative says the balance on the e-ticket is not the actual amount of the fine. That's kind of like a placeholder because all super speeders have to go to court. So that assures it kind of shocks you is and that, gets you in front of the judge. Yeah, like scared straight. Yeah, like, I would be. I'd at, be scared out of my car for at the that rest point, of my they life. Would have to come and get me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got it. You can afford it. Buy me. Million, million dollars? Yeah. Come, come, get come, get come get me. You can have all this. You can have it all. You can take them too. <laughs> no, A million dollars. Hold up. Come and get me. <laughs> We're sacrificial <laughs> lambs. Oh, get out of here you with like that. that. Take it all. Take it all. Ha, ha, ha.